Well, welcome back everybody. I'm George. Another installment of another one of our how-to videos. Now, these videos, of course, and the channel itself, for, this is all for our community. So if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be doing this. So please, if you get an opportunity, comment, uh, share us with your friends, of course, subscribe. Uh, but we really, really enjoy the feedback. So the more you give us, the better off we can do because all we want to do is be able to serve this community uh, as best we possibly can. So without further ado, let's get on to business. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to set up, I'm going to use the Mighty Mini, the three gallon still from Mile High. Uh, now, it doesn't matter which kind of still you use. Uh, just understand that each still has its own personality. And uh, of course, you know, you know how to work your own stuff. Before we get started, though, what I want to do is get a shout out because I meet so many different people and I'm really, really excited. Uh, Bernie and Kathy out of Tennessee. Hey, he's a gun toting guy out of Tennessee who is a patriot, a former Navy guy, and he and his wife watch the channel and we're really excited and hopefully you enjoy this. So Bernie and Kathy, for you, this I salute you, sir. Thank you very much for your service to our country and let's get on with this. Here's what's going to happen now. I've got the three gallon still here. I've got, of course, the column, the column with the, uh, oh my goodness, my, the Liebig condenser, which I like to call a shotgun condenser. Oh, I've got, uh, of course, my PID. I'll show you that in a second, because uh, we're going to make gin. Gin, everybody. Now, you know, there's two really two ways to make gin uh, from well, on your final product, because remember, everything that's made, I, I don't care if it's Gentleman Jack, you listening, Kathy? Uh, or if it's, uh, oh my goodness, what, tequila? Anything, everything that's made, when it comes out of a still, even on a commercial still, it should be and will be crystal clear. Crystal clear. So it's supposed to be that way. And then everything that happens to it, aside from some of the flavoring that goes in through the distillation process, uh, is done afterwards. So there's really two ways you can make uh, gin. One is, by infusing juniper berries, uh, you know, little juniper, and I'll show you those in a second. Juniper berries. Uh, the other way is to distill through juniper berries. Now, I'll leave, uh, guess which one is more effective? But you got it right. If you distill through juniper berries, it is much more effective. It's much more the, the tones, the notes, the flavors are much more subtle and long lasting. But if you infuse, uh, what will happen is, is you wind up with a really good gin, but it's always going to tint it just quite just a little bit. I've got about 20 juniper berries in here, and this has been sitting for oh about two weeks, and I, it's more than well done. Uh, and I've opened it up, smelled it, tasted it. It tastes just like gin. But everybody knows that when we drink gin, gin should be clear. So how do we get clear gin? Well, we do it the most effective way, which is to distill through it. So what we're going to do is, uh, and I'll show you this as we go through this, what we're going to do is we're going to take just an old standard piece of cheesecloth. So you don't have to go out and buy nothing special. Uh, a little piece of string. We're going to crack some juniper berries. Where do I got those at? Those are sitting here somewhere. There they are. I've got a pack of these. I got one ounce. Now I've used about 20 out of there. So there's about three quarters of an ounce left. Now for a three gallon still, I'd recommend you use maybe about 20, 25 berries. The juniper berries. And they're small black round berries. You can see those. Yeah, just small round black berries. Um, that's where you get that sort of that piney, turpentiney. It's really hard to describe unless you're a gin drinker. Uh, but it's got a really, really good flavor. So what we'll do is we'll take these <coughs> excuse me, and uh, we'll crack them, take a little hammer and just pop them, each one of them, because you don't want to put them in their hole. And then we're going to make a small sock. We're just going to put them inside this cheesecloth. We're going to fold the ends of the cheesecloth up and we're going to make a satchel, tie a piece of string around the top of it, and we're going to drop that down inside of our column. Now, I'll have my copper, and, and this is not a discussion about whether you need copper or you don't need copper. I'm going to put it in there because most everybody still believes, and that's fine. That's fine. Um, I'm not going to argue the point. Uh, Having copper, not having copper, to me it doesn't matter. But I'll put it in there just to satisfy everybody and just to make it complete. But I'll roll this up. This is about 18 inches and I'm going to roll this up. And see, that's all you have to do is just roll it up nice. Uh, not real tight, but just tight enough to get inside this two inch column. 
I'll slide that down there and then the juniper berries will go on top and they'll sit right here. Now what will happen, what will happen is now is that our vapors as they start to rise through the column they'll rise through that copper then they're going to rise through the juniper berries and they're going to start to extract some of that potent flavors and aromas that are in those juniper berries and then it's going to transfer over into our condenser and then it will come out the end voila we will have a clear clean crisp gin so see that's how easy that really is uh, and, and I'm using this because I just want to show you that uh, yeah you could buy a gin basket and, you know a gin basket would go in the middle of the column you know it's it's the, but the cost sometimes is prohibitive um, but gosh, just, you just want it in the vapor trail. You want it effect, it's as effective as you can get it in the vapor trail, so put it in this. All right, uh, one other thing is that I've got one of these. Now, this is not necessary, absolutely not, but I had it sitting on the shelf, and I'm like, my gosh, I haven't used that in a long time. So this is just a glass extension. I'm going to put this on the bottom, and I'm going to put my column on top. What that's going to do is that's going to give us an opportunity to watch and see what's going on as those vapors start to rise. So I think, I think you'll find that interesting. All right. Now, um, our three-gallon kettle, and I've got a 2,000-watt heater element in there. You see that? Oh, there it is. And, uh, just, and if you follow some of the other videos, and I'd recommend you go back to them, uh, th these are the two wires, a black and a white, for the uh, 120 volts. There's only two screws on here. Only two screws. And you got one ground, and I'll take that ground, and I'll mount it here with a clip. And voila, there you go. Got it. So that's how those work. And it doesn't, it's not polarity specific, so it doesn't matter if the white one goes where the black one goes or the black one goes where the white one goes. It doesn't care. So just wire it up and plug it in. Um, my PID, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of and love PIDs, uh, and I use them all the time. There's a really good control mechanism. They're made by my pin. Uh, let me see. There's Inkbird, um, there's Golath, there's Rex. Uh, they're all of them are equal. Uh, I just like the my pin because it's a whole lot to me. I'm just real more really that familiar with them. Uh, and the ink birds, uh, they're just really really simple to use. And what they do is they target your heat, and they work it there. It's like uh, like cruise control in a car. Think of it like that. You know, when you get it set at a certain speed, that's where it goes and that's where it stays. Well, the same thing with this. You set the temperature and it stays there. Uh, and you'll notice here that I've got you know, my solid state relay. This is my hot, where it, it's broken. Uh, this is the, the connection, the solid state relay, the relay portion of this uh, is between these two here. And this is the signal that's out from the PID. When the PID comes on, it says, boom, go, do it. And this red light comes on, makes that connection, which makes this receptacle hot. And I'll be plugged into that. And, of course, my thermal couple, my probe, goes into the bung which will go into the top of the column how about that all right now I don't want to spend a whole lot of time with this uh, you can see I've got my mash sitting back here this is a, a sugar mash I made it out of corn sugar a couple weeks ago and it's just set it's cleared uh, no it doesn't go bad no it cannot turn to vinegar uh, old wives tales old rumors remember you've got to inject the acetobacter virus into that in order to turn alcohol into vinegar so for those of you who you know call or I, mean, I don't mind but you know you call and go hey I, you know I got it done you know do I have to do I have to distill it the day before it turns into vinegar I usually tell them I, I've let them set for three to six months before I get to them as long as they're sealed up uh, it's perfectly harmless uh, it just sits there and it's a natural preservative because it's, it's a high alcohol content. So nothing's going to happen to it. All right, I've got that and I've got my filter. <clears throat> and if I need to filter it, I'll use my zero water filter, which I love to use. Just be cautious. Hey, look, if you're using one of these, make sure that's all you use it for. Because if you, if, if you clear spirits in here and you pour in a quart and then you get your quart back out of it, um, and then you put, put it away and then the kids go in and make Kool-Aid out of that, they're going to have some really hefty Kool-Aid. So make sure you separate that from the regular ones all right and also when you're going to filter uh, I, I cut it down about 95 uh, anything above 110 makes it really difficult because alcohol is so thin uh, it'll shoot right through that that filter uh, I, I break it down to about 95 
and then I run it through the filter, you'll lose five to eight points. Um, and that's just because you've got some of those molecules that get stuck and they get, you know, they're rancid and they're, 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 they're all over the place. Uh, and it usually comes out about a good 80, 83, 84. Uh, and you can cut a little bit more if you want, but that, that really tends to work for me. Okay, um, looks like we've got everything just about set up. What I'll do is I'll be back shortly. I'll have this filled. We'll get it all set up and then we'll just start talking again. Hang in there and we'll see you and just Bernie, Kathy, Hang with us, we'll see you a few minutes. Now we're tracking. Uh, I've got just about everything together. You can see my glass is all steamed up. We're gonna see what happens with that. We're gonna learn from that one because remember, that's not a requirement. That's just an add-on that I had sitting around. Uh, I've got the water running. It's right at uh, 86.2 degrees. I got it set at 90. I like to step it up slowly so that I got, you know, I maintain control. I wanted to show you this. Now this is the juniper berry. And I uh, don't want this to get too out of focus. That's a juniper berry. Um, and this is a juniper berry crushed. Wow, that's kind of hard to show you. What I've done is I've taken a hammer and uh, I just tapped it. And well, there it is. You can see that it's just, just cracked. So you, you, don't have to, uh, you don't have to grind these or anything else. And so what I've done is I've put that in the satchel already. And you see I just folded up the ends and tied a string around it. Now, you might want to wonder, why did I put a string on it? Well, I'm getting ready to drop it down inside that column and I'm gonna let it land about right here. And I'm gonna leave the string on there so that in the event that it comes out a little bit too strong, maybe I've used too many berries, uh, I can always pull the top off, pull this out and replace the top. Uh, so I don't waste a whole batch. I can, I can actually kind of adjust my flavors and uh, if it needs a little bit more, I can always pull it out, add more, and stick it back in there, but otherwise you're stuck with it. So bear with me and uh we'll get to doing some collecting we're going to collect in pint jars. oh yeah in these or half pint jars just because it's a small run i'll be with you well that didn't take long i've got it all set everything is balanced uh, you can see that the steam inside my my glass here ouch that's hot uh, it's starting to dissipate and i can still see drops coming back down so i've got a little bit of just a little bit of reflux action going on in there uh, as it condenses and starts to drop back in. And you can see the first three jars I have, and from my right to your, my right to left, is a jar one, jar two, jar three. Uh, and I like to mark those just so I kind of know where they came off on the run. I pulled off the methanol, which came out pretty, pretty rank, but uh, it, and it's supposed to be that way. And it burns yellow. So when it started burning blue, I started uh, keeping them. So. Now I've got, as a matter of fact, I've got this first one here that this is actually just pure, clear. Uh, what I didn't do is I didn't have my satchel in there in time and this one filled up on me. That's pretty quick. So I've got those three and I've smelled them and they've got, they've got this beautiful aroma of, uh, of gin. So we're making gin out of juniper berries, a sugar mash, sugar wash, and a small three gallon still. And we're just, we're running, we're happy here. So there's not really that much more to show you. Um, it's really coming out so good and so clear. I'm not gonna filter this one. I'm just gonna add that little bit of glycerin that we always add. A lot of old timers won't tell you that. A little bit of glycerin. And it's a vegetable-based glycerin, so it's perfectly healthy, perfectly safe. And you can find it at your grocery stores in the pharmaceutical area. Now, real small, real small bottles. It, it only takes two ounces per gallon. Uh, but I put it in a little squirt bottle to kind of put, put it in, stir it up or shake it and then taste it. It takes that, you know, that bite you get on the back of your throat from um, regular moonshine. It'll, it, it'll smooth that right out. I wanted to pop in real quick and show you something. Um, this glass on here is really, really interesting. Uh, what we're able to do now, and I think you can remember from the beginning of the run, uh, when it was nice and cloudy and steamed up and it looked like some drops were dropping down through it. Well, once this thing balances and you're still balances, if you have one of these glasses, you'd be able to see, you can see right through it. So it's, it's absolutely clear. And what that is, is you see these, they're invisible vapors that are just rising. And that's your, uh, that's your ethanol coming up. And of course it's going up through the top and through our condenser with cold water. And uh, then we're, running it out here and we're running through a parrot. Now this run started off at like 140 when I was really happy with that. We're down to about 120 now. And um, I don't know, I'll run it till, I, I normally don't run them lower than 80. So look, until next time, please like us, share us with your friends. Uh, please comment below. Just 
Let us know what you think. Uh, send us your questions, your comments. Uh, they're always welcome. And until next time, as we always say here, happy distilling. <laughs>